Hey guys, welcome back to the laboratory. In this video, we are looking at the different allotropes of carbon. By the end of this video, you should be able to define the term allotrope, identify different allotropes of carbon, and explain the properties of different carbon allotropes. So, let's go. An allotrope is a different structural form of the same element. The element carbon can exist as several different allotropes, some of which include fullerenes, graphene, graphite, and diamond. Each of these substances are made up of carbon atoms only. However, the carbon atoms in each are arranged differently. Because of this, each of these allotropes will have slightly different properties and uses. We'll start firstly with the fullerenes. Fullerenes are a family of carbon allotropes whereby each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three others. Fullerenes are classed as simple molecules as they contain only a few atoms bonded together. An example of an allotrope belonging to this family is Buckminster fullerene. In Buckminster fullerene, there are 60 carbon atoms arranged into pentagonal or hexagonal balls. Fullerenes have very low melting and boiling points as there are weak forces of attraction between its molecules, therefore requiring little energy for these forces to be broken. They are also very soft and slippery materials as the weak intermolecular forces allow the molecules to slide past one another. Graphene is comprised of a single sheet of carbon atoms that can be rolled up into a tube. Each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three others, and the atoms are of no fixed formula, meaning the number of carbon atoms in each sheet of graphene can vary. The distinct structure of graphene can be used to explain its properties. Since it is only one atom thick, Graphene is a very lightweight material, and the strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms make graphene very tough. Graphene is also a great conductor of electricity. Remember that carbon has a valency of 4, meaning it can form a maximum of 4 covalent bonds at a time. Because the carbon atoms in graphene only form 3 covalent bonds, there are freely moving electrons that are not being held in covalent bonds. The presence of these delocalized electrons allow for an electrical charge to be carried, therefore making graphene a great conductor of electricity. Graphite is a giant molecular structure consisting of many graphene layers held together by weak intermolecular forces. In this allotrope, each carbon atom is covalently bonded to three others. The freely moving electrons on the surface of each graphene layer are able to carry an electrical charge, making graphite an excellent conductor of electricity and explaining its common use for making electrodes. As well as being a great conductor, graphite also has a very high melting and boiling point. This is because of the many strong covalent bonds between the carbon atoms. These bonds must first be broken before the state of graphite can be changed. Despite having a high melting and boiling point, graphite is relatively soft in comparison to other carbon allotropes. This property is the result of the weak intermolecular forces between the graphene layers, which allow the layers to slide across each other. This property explains why graphite is often used as a lubricant. Finally, we have diamond. Like graphite, diamond is a covalent, giant molecular structure, where each carbon atom is covalently bonded to four others. The carbon atoms in diamond form a tetrahedral arrangement. Unlike graphite, Diamond is a very hard material. This is a result of its rigid network of carbon atoms, all of which are joined together by very strong covalent bonds. This property explains why diamond is often used in cutting tools such as oil rig drills and diamond tipped cutters. In addition, diamond is a very poor conductor of electricity. In diamond, one carbon atom is covalently bonded to four others, meaning the valency of each carbon atom is filled. Because each carbon atom is held in place by strong covalent bonds, there are no free electrons within diamond to carry an electrical charge. However, much like graphite, diamond has a very high melting and boiling point. The large number of covalent bonds within its giant molecular structure require a lot of energy to be broken and change its state. Here's an example of a GCSE past paper question. Take note of the marks awarded for this question. For three marks, you'll need to be making three strong points. Pause the video and take your time to answer. I'll be waiting for you on the other end with the mark scheme.
The diagram has been provided in this question for a reason, so we want to use this to our advantage as we structure an answer. Now remember, carbon is in group 4 of the periodic table, and therefore has 4 electrons on its outer shell. As carbon needs an extra 4 electrons to become stable, it will form a maximum of 4 bonds at a time when it reacts. In the diagram of graphene provided, we can see that one carbon atom is only covalently bonded to three others. As the carbon atoms in graphene have not fulfilled their bonds, there are going to be three electrons moving throughout its structure. To conduct electricity, there must be freely moving charged particles to carry the electrical charge. In graphene, we have these particles in the form of electrons, therefore graphene is going to make a great conductor. So, to achieve our marks on this question, the first mark is awarded for mentioning that carbon has four electrons in its outer shell. The second mark is awarded for stating that in graphene, each carbon atom is only covalently bonded to three others. And your final mark is then awarded for indicating that there are going to be delocalized electrons in graphene that are free to carry the electrical charge. So, how did you do on this question? Let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, that's it for this video guys, thank you for joining me in the laboratory. Please leave a like on this video if you found it useful, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one. See you soon!